Welcome back to another episode of Making Bank with Monkey Knife Fight, presented by True North Fantasy Football. Trav here, coming live from Dirty Laundry Studios as always, and tonight I have got Making Bank's first ever guest. With me tonight is fellow True Norther, a member of the A-Team, if you will, uh, and the co-host of the Point After podcast as a part of the True North Pod Network. You can find him on Twitter at the Point After FF. This is Julian Barnett. Jules, how you doing tonight, my man? Good, Trav. How you doing, man? Thanks for having me. I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. I'm a little bit under the weather today, I'll be honest. So if my voice is a little uh, little hoarse, um, <laughs> that is why I, I stayed home from work today. Lounged on the couch with the kids, watched a little bit of Harry Potter. So, um, yeah, that sounds know, like a good day. Could have been worse, except like, you know, when you're trying to lounge on the couch and be like super comfy and whatnot, um, having a five year old and a three year old who are all knees and elbows is a little bit, uh, a little <laughs> bit uncomfortable, but, uh, we made it happen and I uh, haven't seen Harry Potter in ages and those movies hold up, man. Yeah, they really do. When we did our, uh, our quarantine, we did a Harry Potter and a Marvel marathon. Oh, and, uh, well, it was good. a good time. <laughs> nice, man. Nice. Yeah, I got to get into the Marvel Marathon, um, but it looks like it's wheels up on the Harry Potter Marathon at my household, so I'm okay with that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're Harry, we're big Harry Potter buffs here, actually. We got a map blanket kicking around. <laughs> nice. Do you guys have an Do you guys have an invisibility cloak? I uh, know, but I have a few wands. A few nice. wands. You know, nice. I can. I can summon one. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. I like it. We'll have to save that for another episode and we'll, maybe we'll do, <laughs> do an HP epi or something like that. <laughs> Trav, Trav and Jules try Harry Potter spells. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wingardium Leviosa. <laughs> Leviosa. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Nice, man. Well, just, yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about Monkey Knife Fight here before we get started. But um, for any of those new viewers, Making Bank is uh, an episode that we're doing weekly where um, we'll go into one of these DFS player prop games on monkey knife fight we'll give a little bit of analysis to kind of explain where we're going reason out the the picks and uh drop a little money and as the title says hopefully we make a little bit of bank um so as far as monkey knife fight on that end they are the fastest growing dfs platform in the industry right now affiliated with nfl major league baseball and nhl teams their product is just as strong as their brand power uh, with DFS prop games for all sports leagues, all skill levels, they're sure to have something for you. Enter into contests for specific matchups if you want to put some money down on your own team, or you can jump into the star shootout for a mashup of studs from the early or the late game slates every Sunday. Um, so there's just a lot for everybody there, and you got games like more or less rapid fire you got touchdown dance monkey knife fight is definitely good for keeping you engaged in some of those games that you normally wouldn't want to watch or stay in tune with um yeah i was saying earlier in, on one of the pods that i've never been more excited for a jets broncos game um <laughs> but we had a really we had a really cool uh contest in that monkey knife fight on that one it just kind of kept me kind of fired up for that game so if anybody who's watching wants to get out there and get in on the action, they can sign up at monkeyknifefight.com. And on your first deposit, use the promo code TNFF, and they will match your first deposit up to 50 bucks. Uh, so drop 50, you get to play with 100. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun and um, a lot of different ways to maximize the earning potential, let's say, on Monkey Knife Fight. So that promo code is TNFF at monkeyknifefight.com. Okay, Jules, we're gonna get into yeah, man. It's uh, it's been a blast <laughs> linking up with Monkey Knife Fight. Actually, I man, so um, much fun on there. No it kidding, it is. It's so much fun, and I actually got a package today, um, in the mail from our friends at Monkey Knife Fight. It is oh. a uh, their mascot, the the monkey that you can see on my hat there. Uh, his name is Furious George, and uh, <laughs> it just so happens that I was able to get my hands on a Furious George oh! volleyball head. Yeah, so he's got the bling there, which is fitting for our Making Bank segment. There you go. He's got uh, Nick from Monkey Knife Fight had to point out that he's got those sick white loafers on. Um, there you go. 
yeah, man, it's uh, I got Furious George with me, and I think that's going to be a bit of a good luck charm for us to make some bank, my man. So I'm just going to share my screen here, Julian. We are going to dive into a more or less game, and this is one uh, where we have to have to get three out of three correct. Uh, so we got to nail all of these ones, and uh, the multiplier is five times our buy-in. So. This one's just five times. Uh, we were talking before the show, Julian, about some of the crazy ones. You can get up to a hundred times multiplier on your That's buy-in. Nuts. It's <laughs> not. It's eight players, so I mean, there's a lot of digging to be done. Um, you know, variables. you really got to look into this this stuff, and it, you know, the hit rate is very low on something like that. But if you can hit one, I actually put in on a hundred or a hundred times uh, multiplier earlier in the day. And I just dropped five bucks on it just because I figured, you know, it's a bit of a long shot. But five hundred dollars uh, if you hit that, that's 500 bucks from five. <laughs> so I will take that eight days a week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but for this one, uh, we are going to stick to the more or less game jewels. I find that that's kind of one of my favorites to to analyze because it is kind of that middle ground for me between maybe those degenerates like ourselves or those people who just want to kind of jump in and just have a little bit of fun with their partner or whatever it may be. Um, so I like more or less for that purpose. Um, and as I scroll down here, we're going to let the people have a look at what we're going to be um, selecting here. We got three guys. We got to get all three of these right. We got Matt Ryan. And that line for Matt Ryan is 300 and a half passing yards. Ben Roethlisberger at 287 and a half passing yards and Adam Thielen at 86 and a half receiving yards. So some really cool stuff to dig into um, some interesting offenses. So why don't we dive right into Matt Ryan first, Julian? Um, they are in Minnesota and the over under on this game is 54 and a half points. So I'm wondering what you're thinking as far as how you would dissect this and uh, make your choice, whether it's more or less. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm going to take the less on this one for sure. Um, you know, Matt Ryan's only thrown over 300 yards one time this season. It was week one against Seattle, and he threw for 450, so it skews his average a bit. And, uh, you know, he, he's, he's actually averaging about, you know, 240 yards a game. And so this is an easy line for me. I'm going to hit the under. The Vikings have been um, stepping up their game on defense in the past couple of weeks. You know, the record doesn't show up, but they were able to compete with Seattle last week and hold them to 26 points. So, um, you know, I think this this dumpster fire of a, of a <laughs> team that we're looking at, I, I don't think that Matt Ryan's going to be able to put up 300 points, 300 passing yards. Mm hmm. Yeah, I uh, I think I'm with you on the less option. And I think that's where we're going to go. It was interesting when I was looking into it, there was some some stats and whatnot that came to the contrary of what we think, actually. So if you look at Matt Ryan, he's got the third most pass attempts, which is obviously good for getting pass yards. He's mm -hmm. thrown the second most deep attempts in the league. And even with Julio missing some time, Matt Ryan has thrown the most air yards of any quarterback in the league. And then to look at the Minnesota defense, Julian, they've given up the six most, most passing yards allowed. Um, mm -hmm. And but then if you look at their games, they gave over gave yeah. up over three hundred to Rodgers and Tannehill, um, and then Deshaun Watson hit two ninety. But then they held Russell Wilson in that high powered Seattle offense to one hundred and ninety passing yards. So um, they've been against high powered defenses and or high powered offenses in Minnesota, um, and they've mm -hmm. gone kind of both ways on this line. Um, but I'm definitely with you on the less option. I think in looking at the injury reports, it looks like Julio's listed as questionable, but everything is kind of leaning towards him not playing. I think the yeah. average timeline on the injury that he had with a hammy was two to three weeks, and it's only been one week. Um, so that's kind of a big factor to me because Julio does eat up a lot of air yards. Um, he he does get those big yardage games, right? So I think him potentially missing, um, he didn't practice on Wednesday. Definitely a note for anybody watching. Keep an eye out for those Friday practice reports. But I think I'm with you, Jules. We're going to go with less on Matt Ryan and that 300 and a half yard line. Um, yeah, I just think that's that's a bit of a big line. If we're talking like 280, I might yeah, be into that's that. That's I real mean, close. It, it, like 20 yeah. yards doesn't seem like a lot, but um, you know, 300 yard games are are a, a solid accomplishment against NFL defenses. So um, sure. I'm with you. We're sticking with the less option there. See, I always hit over 300 yards when I'm playing Madden. 
Yeah. So it like it's a lot. <laughs> but in real life, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh, when you're throwing up five hundies on Madden, it's a little, <laughs> a little bit different for sure. Pass um, rating of 152. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I miss those days. I have to be honest, buddy. I haven't gamed in a long time. Um, ever since we had our first kid about five years ago, uh, the Xbox has gotten time. It's gotten real dusty, so I definitely appreciate the time when uh, my brother-in-law comes over with one of his consoles and we get to game out for a little bit, which is yeah, which is rare, but it's fun. Okay, so yeah. the next one, we are going to Pittsburgh. This game is in Pittsburgh. Ben Roethlisberger in that 287.5 yard uh, passing uh, line. It is the Cleveland Browns coming to Pittsburgh, and that over-under on that game is 51 points. Um, so not a huge over-under, but it's decent. Like, that's roughly 25 points per team, like average or whatever. But um, what are you thinking here for the Cleveland-Pittsburgh game? Because we've seen Cleveland be pretty – or we've seen Pittsburgh, sorry, be a high-powered passing offense in the past, but we've seen them have some strugg- struggles as well. Yeah, well, and I, I'm actually excited to watch this game. This is going to be a shootout. This is going to be a, a fun game to watch. Um, I have two monkey knife fight bids in right now, one with <laughs> Roethlisberger on the over and one with Roethlisberger on the under, because I don't nice. know. You know, <laughs> um, I think it, it could go either way on this one. It really could. Um, mm-hmm. I'm more confident in the less. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I think I think both of these teams will rely more um, on their run game. And, uh, you know, whenever we see – these these teams come together these interconference teams it's it's just as much about making a statement and you know pounding that other team as it is you know about about scoring points right so um Mm -hmm. i think it's going to be a grinded out game and and you know i don't i don't think he throws for for 288 i like it i like it i'm with you and it's the divisional matchup that was a big deciding factor because um he can hit this we've seen him do that before he did it he he did it against the broncos um but then if you look at his other games he hasn't even hit 250 yards in his other three matchups and Mm -hmm. in two in all three of those matchups he was over 30 pass attempts and the game he hit just over 300 he needed 42 pass attempts to get there so um i don't think it's going to be like that in this game i think they're going to be trying to run the ball um it's funny when you look at cleveland's defense because they are uh, bottom three as far as passing yards given up and top five as far as few as ru- rushing yards given up. But I do think that that divisional matchup is going to be a big factor, going to be a little bit of knockdown, grind out kind of game. Um, yeah. Maybe one of those hard hat and lunch pail games as we if we want to take one of those cliches. Um, but yeah, I think we're going less on, on the Ben Roethlisberger one there just because uh, he's been a little bit out of sync this year. Uh, Deontay Johnson's a little bit banged up. Looks like he might be back and we love him, but uh, I just think there's, there's something a little bit out of sync. And it's funny, actually, one thing that um, we have a couple of Steelers fans in the true North chat, Will, Brian, and uh, Ty. Uh, and I've been podding with Ty for a long time. And he was just on the episode that we posted this week. Uh, and he was saying that that offense is not looking good whatsoever. So those are just kind of little things that I take note of as uh, Ty is much more plugged into the Steelers as I, than I am. Um, so that's something that I'll take note of as I'm kind of evaluating moving through. Uh, so I think we made the right choice on less and uh, only a few more days until we find out, man. So that's the beauty yeah. among <laughs> night fight, man. Like there's anticipation. There's a bunch of anticipation. You drop that buy in and you know, we got three days, three days till Sunday. So we're sitting here where we might analyze this stuff and beat ourselves up a little bit. But uh, <laughs> I think uh, it's funny because hindsight is 2020, but I think we should uh, like- trust, Trust in our sound analysis, right? Yeah, a hundred (laughs) percent. Nice, man. Okay, so we got the last one here is Adam Thielen, and that receiving line is eighty-six and a half yards. Um, They are playing at home this week. Atlanta is coming to Minnesota. We all already did Matt Ryan there, Um, and the over under for this game is just bear with me for one second. Uh, that over under for that is uh, 54 and a half. So 54 and a half points. Um, so when we're looking at that, that's a, that's a pretty solid line for that game. Yeah. Obviously Atlanta is high powered. Um, Minnesota is not so much, uh, but what are you thinking for this one? Because Adam Thielen has been having <laughs> a great year. Yeah. Yeah, man. I actually have Thielen in, in two separate leagues. I got him in an orphan team. I took over and couldn't move him. 
And mm-hmm. now he's, uh, you know, he's the wide receiver too. So I'll take that after uh, five weeks and, and uh, you know, <laughs> be happy about it. But I got the over, totally. I got, I got more on, on this one, you know, Dalvin cook's likely going to be out this game. You know, we've seen Madison can handle the load, but uh, I, I don't think they're putting it all on him. I, they're mm-hmm. not going to give him all the work that Cook had. You know, I think Mike Boone gets some work. And, you know, Adam Thielen's – he's Kirk's guy. You know, mm-hmm. he, he, they have that chemistry. You see them out there together. When he's looking for somebody, he, he finds Thielen, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and the emergence of Justin Jefferson only helps Thielen. You know, it stretches the field. It, totally. It, um, you know, it opens everything up. So he's not as important as a ball catcher in this offense, you know. Uh, or sorry, he's more important as a pass catcher yeah. in this offense, but he's not relied on as the only pass catcher. Absolutely. And I think that kind of showed um, that they were ready to rely on Adam Thielen when they decided to get rid of one of who I think is one of the most talented receivers in the game and Stefan Diggs, instead of paying yeah. him, uh, they decided to hit the draft and ride out Adam Thielen. So uh, that's telling in itself. And I'm with you. I think it's going to be the more option here because Atlanta's defense is so bad. Like, yep. Terribly the last bad. point, man. Like, so, so bad. <laughs> it's just incredible that Dan Quinn, a defensive coach, still has his job right now. But uh, that's, I, I guess, for, that, <laughs> that is a story for another day. I think Wait. the Ar- Arthur Blank effect, he's very loyal. He likes likes to have his guys around for a long time. Oh, you Travis. know what? I am mistaken. I'm like 100% sure I Dan Quinn got fired. He yeah. did. I'm mixing I up. Just gonna say, you know, funny. I keep. I always mix up him and Gase because both of those guys should have been just gone long ago. Like so um, long ago. <laughs> so that was uh, completely my mistake. Yeah, Dan Quinn is gone. Uh, regardless, that was long overdue. So um, yeah. we can disregard that portion. But uh, <laughs> either way, Adam Thielen, man, he has been a funnel for targets in Minnesota. Um, you mentioned the chemistry with Kirk Cousins, and that is a huge factor. The trust factor in how crafty Adam Thielen is as a route runner. And just great uh, hands, man. He catches totally. everything that comes. This yeah, way. he does. He does. I think he. I think he's only got like one, maybe two drops on the season on a bunch of targets. So that's really good. And I think he's been used in quite a different way this season. Um, obviously that funnel with him and Justin Jefferson and pretty much no other pass catchers has helped, but he's getting the ball like a lot deeper down the field. He's never previously had an average depth of target of 12 yards and he's sitting right around there this year before he's been in that, you know, nine, 10 range for each target. Mm -hmm. Um, but he's getting them a little bit further downfield. He's got the fourth, fourth most deep targets in the entire NFL, which is actually, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's already more than he had all of last year. He's got 12, and he had 11 total last year. And he's also got the the higher. Absolutely, absolutely, for sure. Um, But, I mean, his pace is is going to smash that. He's not not somebody you think is like a deep receiver, but he's being used well there. And those hands and that route running is is a huge asset for that. So, uh, when I'm looking at it, he has hit that line in two of his five games. Um, But the last game against Seattle, he only missed it by about six and a half yards with 80 yards so with the atlanta defense factored in i'm with you jules we're going more on adam thielen so i think these are solid that's that's a real good line you know yeah that is it's really close because um with with him getting a little bit more of those big plays this year um he's more likely to smash out half of this line in one play um but we've also seen him in that kind of short target reliable role before so it's kind of hard to move over to that thinking of seeing him as somebody who's getting those downfield targets so um i like these lines a lot actually and i like our picks on these um this this seems like easy money to me i'm not gonna lie I think so too. And for that reason, I'm I'm gonna drop a 20 burger down on this one. I'm not gonna Woo! break the bank on it, but I'm not I'm not gonna lay five bones on this one because I'm pretty confident. And you know, when you look at it here, if we if we hit this one, we're turning that 20 into a cool hundo. So um that's that's gonna be fantastic. And I think we're getting that. So I submit this bad boy. And Julian, I decided that we are going to enter one more quick contest before we ride Woo-hoo! out here. Uh we're gonna go into uh a touchdown dance for the the same uh, game slate love it we're gonna go touchdown we're gonna, dances are my favorite it's so much fun um our guy <laughs> will harris does a column for monkey knife fight weekly on their touchdown dance um and <clears throat> sorry and he's really kind of champion this yeah exactly <laughs> yeah um he's really kind of champion this is one of the most fun games to play on monkey knife fight and i would tend to agree with him um 
So for anybody who hasn't seen and we look at we look at touchdown dance, uh, they've got the goals down here. Um, so you're picking three players and you want them to hit more than three and a half touchdowns to multiply by one and a half, more than four and a half to multiply by three, and then more than five and a half to multiply by six. I'll be honest with you, Julian. I have been burned on this game a ton because I'm going for <laughs> these five, going for yeah. five, going for six touchdowns out of these. I'm three only guys. going for six, man. <laughs> I know, and it just burns me. So I'm going to try, and this is what Will does, and he's actually um, been able to capitalize on some of these. He goes for the lower option, but puts a little bit better uh, buy-in. So I'm going to toss another 20 spot down. Obviously, that only turns it into 30, but we play this stuff for fun, so I'm not too worried about the, the earnings on that one for this. This is just kind of a fun bonus game for us. Um, but let's dive into the players in the early slate because there are a lot of games. Yeah. Um, do you see anybody here that uh, that's enticing for you? I yeah, see man. one right off the hop. Me too. And uh, he's right there with injury on the top of his name, <laughs> Kareem Hunt. Mm -hmm. uh, I love him in this game. I, I, I'm not worried about that injury. Um, you know, but if if he is injured, then this is not like Monkey Night Fight is going to be canceled anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I love him in this game. We talked about, about this game earlier i think this is a ground and pound game and you know i think when they get into the red zone they're not just looking to to hand him the ball but they're also going to pass him the ball so baker big loves time. him i'm all about him here big time so we're going to take kareem hunt there i'm going to uh i'm going to dive in on the second one and we're just going to lock yes. in Derek henry man yeah i think it's against the every, houston Texans. every monkey knife fight i use Derek henry yeah everyone I mean, <laughs> he's going to punch something in Houston's defense sucks against the run. Uh, so I think that to me is just a no brainer. So the third one's going to be a little bit tricky. Um, so moving along here, we got James Robinson, who's been really good. Um, Todd Gurley, who scored twice last week, receiving and rushing, la uh, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, moving over, we've got James Connor going against that Cleveland defense, who's actually been pretty stout um, against that. the run. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the Steelers can score anytime. Mark Andrews against my Eagles. That's a nice little play because my Eagles are garbaggio right now. Mm -hmm. Um Kenny I'm G, this is a big Mike play. Davis there as well. Yeah, for sure. Who is Carolina playing again? Um, uh, they, Chicago. Uh, this uh, Chicago. Yeah, mm. Chicago defense is decent, but they've given up some yardage for sure. And Mike Davis is a top 10 running back right now. It's yeah, unreal. It's crazy. Honestly, it's like when CMC is back, I think Mike Davis deserves a role on this team. He's some form. He's a, he's a good player. You know? Yeah, and yeah. they paid Christian McCaffrey so much money. Um, if you're giving him 400 touches a year, He's not going to last that long for you. No, well, I mean you can you see it this year, right? Yeah, you absolutely. Saw, saw the amount of touches he got last year. He never came off the field, and you know, two two games into the season, he's injured, right? No preseason, nothing like that. It's that's, that's sad. Tough. He's fun yeah. to watch. He's so much fun to watch. Man. Oh all man, right. this is all right. This is getting There's deep. Now. Terry Mack, <laughs> there it is. Johnu, AJ Brown, Calvin Ridley, Thielen. I'm, I don't mind feeling either. I don't mind feeling either. I'm I'm almost thinking Mark Andrews, man. I know. I, I, I was just going to say, I like your Mark Andrews pick. I think we should lock that in, man. Okay. I think it's a little bit tricky to go tight end, but he's one of the ones who low he's volume. Their red zone option, man. He's getting he's like it. like a running back then. Totally. And he does get some of those seam targets as well, where he'll break 100%. some big touchdowns. So I think that's a good one. Kareem Hunt, Derek Henry, and Mark Andrews. I wish I had the cojones to toss it down for five touchdowns because I could easily see Derek Henry and Mark Andrews doubling up, if not Kareem Hunt. Um, I think this crew gets at least five. Uh, okay, let's I do think it. They get five. Let's do it. We're doing it. <laughs> we are doing it. Um, We're doing it. I hope this pays it. off. I'll take some back. I know. Me too. God, I got a lot of buy-ins this week, so I need to win some of them. Um, <laughs> that's the name of the game. You got to spend money to make money, so we'll submit that bad boy. Uh, I'm excited for that one. I think that one yeah, can definitely be fun. pay off. I actually feel more confident about that one than any of the other touchdown dances that I've gone into just because of those matchups for those guys. Yeah. So I like no, it. That's a, that's a great one. I love that. I think, I honestly, I think they could go for six. I think each of yeah. those guys can get two. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I think they could too, but I don't know if we're going to get to get that crazy. So yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah let's just keep it at five. <laughs> yeah. We'll get a couple W's under our belt on making bank and then we'll start yeah. going. 
for the big money <laughs> stuff for sure. <laughs> right on, Julian. Well, that uh, that does it for the pre week six episode of Making Bank. I appreciate you coming on, man. We're gonna have to do this more often. Uh, I I've decided that I'm gonna just be thrown out in the True North group chat every time I'm doing Making Bank and see who's available to come on. And um, so hopefully we we see you again soon, man. This was fun to get on and chop it up. Yeah, man. Count me in. It sounds like a blast. I enjoyed it. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, buddy. And again, uh, Julian can be followed at the point after FF. And make sure you go to truenorthffb.com slash podcast to find the point after pod. Um, these guys are doing a lot of great work. And, uh, you know, Julian Aaron, Julian, and Aaron, you you have a playing background, right? Like you you played a lot of football. I remember I seeing did, that highlight. Yeah. I remember seeing that highlight tape, Jules. Yeah, there you go. Don't, do don't change the listeners, Trav. I'll have to yeah. drop a link. <laughs> <laughs> Julian's got some tape, folks. Julian has got some tape. I will say that, but we'll leave we'll leave it to a little bit of mystery there. And we'll let the people, <laughs> let the people reach out to you to see if they can get their mitts on that. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Nice, buddy. Well, thanks again for joining, and uh, we'll definitely do this again soon. And for all of those who go in with us on any of these buy-ins, I hope you make some bank with us. Uh, until next week, uh, we are moving through week six, so it's moving fast. Hope everyone's enjoying it. Peace, guys. See you later, guys. You-